Good evening, good evening, good evening. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I pray that all is well with you all and you all are having a God bless Monday afternoon. For this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I choose to rejoice. I make the decision to rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is AGA and I'm back in the saddle again to serve you, the people of God. It is so good to be back. What a blessing it is. What a fellowship. What a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. Oh, what blessedness. Oh, what peace of mind. We are leaning on the everlasting arms. We're leaning, we're leaning. We're safe and secure from all alarm. We're leaning, we're leaning. We're leaning on the everlasting arms. I am so privileged and so blessed and so honored to be back in this place one more time. Glad to be in the number one more time. He didn't have to let us live, but thank God he did. Thank God he did. We're still here because he let us live. He let us be here. He allow us another opportunity to come back together. I'm so grateful, so blessed, and I'm so appreciative to many of you who are tuning in tonight, uh, who come on every Monday night as much as you can to support and to share in this great ministry better known as Back to the Bible. And we are so grateful to the Lord of all the great things that he is doing, all the testimonies, and praise reports that we are receiving on behalf of what God is doing through this ministry. And we he gets all the glory and we give him all the honor and we give him all the praise for all the great things that he is doing and what he has done. Good evening to you. Our very own Sister Keisha Hodges, DTWC Georgia's own representing down there in the state of Georgia. God bless you, Sister Keisha. I pray that all is well with you on this Monday afternoon and you're doing absolutely great. Amen. God bless you. Um, good evening to everybody that's coming in. Thank you so much, Sister Keisha. I am doing absolutely well. Amen. Everybody is doing well. The saints are doing great. Amen. We still on the victory side, Sister Keisha. We're still on the victory side. Amen. So you got the victory too, because you are part of the DTWC family. And what falls on the house falls on each and every one's home, the family, and uh, those that are connected to you. So Count it all joy, Sister Keisha. Shout, dance, praise God right where you are. Celebrate the Lord because you have the victory. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What's going on? And the Lord blessing here in Greensboro. He's blessing in Georgia and all the other states and places where temple lights are located. Amen. The blessing is upon the saints of God. Good evening to the McLaughlins on this Monday afternoon. God bless you. Greetings to you. We pray all is well with you. You all are having a God bless Monday afternoon. Amen. Send blessings toward you all as well. The Lord and I. Amen. A lot of times I use the term we I'm speaking of the Lord and I, amen. I am in agreement with what God desires to do in the lives of his people, amen. If he wants to save, I'm in agreement. If he wants to heal, I'm in agreement. If he wants to deliver, I'm in agreement. If he wants to set free, I'm in agreement. Whatever he wants to do, if he wants to bless somebody, he wants to uh, 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 make a way, he wants to open up a door. I'm in agreement. Amen. Because God knows what's best for each and every one of you. Amen. Thank you so much to the McLaughlins. 
Um, I am doing well. Have no complaints at all. God has been good to me and I'm so glad about it. I got a praise that won't quit. Y'all know my motto. I got a praise that won't quit. Amen. I got a praise that refused to go on strike. Amen. Amen. I praise him. No matter what comes or goes, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, you still you still enjoying today's Midday Monday Nugget? Okay. Yeah, it was a blessing. We had a wonderful time, the Midday Monday crew. We had a wonderful time on Midday Monday sharing the Midday Monday Nugget. If you did not get a chance to go, uh, if you did not get a chance to go and check out the Midday Monday Nugget, please do so and allow it to bless your life. We had a wonderful gathering on the Midday Monday Nugget on the day at 12 noon. So all of you that did not get a chance to tune in to the Midday Monday Nugget, please go back and check it out. God bless everybody that's coming in on the live. God bless you, Brother Lamar. I pray that all is well with you on this Monday afternoon and you're doing absolutely well. God bless you to you and your family. Good evening to you, Brother Ron Jones Jr. What's going on, brother? It was good to see you on yesterday. God bless you, sir. I pray that all is well with you and your family and you're doing absolutely well. Yes, sir, I am doing well. Have no complaints. Thank you, sir, for asking. I am doing absolutely well. Amen. I was sharing with the viewers. I got a praise that won't quit. And I got a praise that refused to go on strike. That's why I'm like David. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. That means you got a praise that won't quit. And you got a praise that refused to go on strike. I don't care what the situation is. I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what comes or goes. I got a praise that won't quit. And I got a, re I got a praise that refused to go on strike. Amen. Amen. Good evening to you, to the creeds. God bless the creeds on this. Monday afternoon, I pray that all is well with you and you all are having a God bless Monday. Yes, sir. It is the date. This is the day that you got baptized one year ago. Amen. You got baptized, you and all of your children. What a great, 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 great uh, ceremony that was amen, to be baptized. It was such a blessing and a privilege and an honor to do so. And we give God the glory, amen, for that uh, momentous occasion on that momentous day. And that's good that you uh, uh, have documented that, you remember that, and you'll never forget it. Amen. So that you can hold on to that and carry that with you on that day. There's nothing like it. Amen. That does my heart good. He had rededicated his life back to God, and then he wanted to be baptized, rebaptized. Amen. And so it was a beautiful thing. And right after that, he tied the knot. <laughs> he got married, and him and Brittany. Uh, such a lovely young couple. They got uh, uh, four beautiful children, uh, just blessed all the way around, blessed family. And uh, I, I, again, I'm, I'm, I was honored to uh, participate in their ceremony. They could have picked and chose anybody, but they chose little old me. Amen. Little old me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for that. Uh, so I just, 
I just want to say thanks to them for um, uh, all the great things that um, uh, God is doing in their life. And so that is a blessing and a privilege. What's going on, Sister Shonda? How you been? Good to see you, woman of God. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with your life has been treating you well. Everybody's doing great, your family and all. I pray blessings upon you there in the state of Tennessee. God bless you. God bless you, Shonda. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, good evening to you, Evangelist Rita Austin. God bless you, Ma. I pray that all is well with you. And you are having a God bless Monday afternoon on today. Yes, 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 yes. Oh my, Lord have mercy. Shonda, 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 Shonda. I got a, I got a message for you. You know, when the Lord begin to speak, I got to do what he says, but he, he just want me to let you know to make preparation, to expect, expect something great. I don't know what it is that you are going through. I don't know what you're praying about. I don't know what's on your heart, but he just wanted me to give you that word uh, of assurance that your prayers uh, have been heard. Amen. Sometimes it seems like our prayers are hindered. Sometimes we, it seems like our prayers are held up. But I'm here to tell you tonight, before I go any further, he wanted me to tell you, to expect something great. Now, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means to you, but uh, I'm just, I, I just had to deliver that mail. He, he downloaded it to me and I had to, I had to send it first class. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you can, you can, you can shout about it now and talk about it later. <laughs> yes, sir. You can shout about it now and talk about it later. God bless you, Sister Franchon Johnson. God bless you, woman of God. Pray that all is well with you. And you are having a God bless Monday afternoon. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, Sister Shonda. Um, just expect it. Just expect it. Um, he has something in store for you. He has something in store for you. And uh it's it's uh it's on the way. That's all <laughs> that's all I know. It's on the way. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> One thing about God, sometimes when he when he chooses to bless his children, he, he uh sometimes he 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 he'll bless you in the form of a surprise. He'll he'll uh he'll he'll bless you uh with a surprise. So you know he, he you know he you know God is uh he just I don't know he. <laughs> Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I am doing absolutely well. Praise the Lord. Glory be to God. I am doing absolutely well. What's up, my little sister, Michelle Reigns? I didn't put nothing up tonight, Michelle. Y'all pray for my little sister. She, she, uh, she attacked me yesterday at the gathering, a man of the official day uh, of our pastor yesterday. Uh, she attacked me after service. Y'all, y'all pray for my little sister. She, she came up uh, on me and started pinching me. <laughs> she started pinching me. Say, I need to put a picture up uh, in the background you know, she said I need to put a picture up or something in the background 
Uh, she said, I got that plain wall back there. I need to, I need to do some decorating or something. I, I got a couple of pictures. I got a, uh, actually I got a, uh, customized favorite trucking sign, I think that I was going to put up back there. I just ain't never got around to doing it, but y'all pray for her. She, 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 she's a trip. She come walking on to me and he said, and he said, what's going on, big bro? I miss you. Nothing. Just start pinching. I felt somebody pinching on my arm, all my pressure points. I said, <laughs> felt like I was getting stung by a, a swarm of bees. <laughs> Y'all pray, pray for her, please. I don't know if it was a combination. She was glad to see her big brother or what. I don't know. Maybe that's what it is. I'm going to blame it on that. She, she, she was glad to see her, her, her. <laughs> oh, oh, really? He did. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now y'all really need to point your hand her way. <laughs> I don't know if it was a combination. She missed her big brother. She was just glad to see me or what? I don't know. But the girl, the girl pinched my arm like I it felt like a swarm of bees was stinging me. But uh I'm working on it, Michelle. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But thank you. Thank you for uh, bringing that to my attention and making that suggestion. Amen. And so, but it's so good to see everybody on the live tonight. Listen, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started because I want to get to the, um, the segment tonight. We got something great for you. The Lord has given me something. Uh, of course, y'all know we've been dealing with fellowship and the power of fellowship and the blessing and fellowship and, and, and where has the fellowship gone is what we've been dealing with. And I believe that fellowship is so important. I believe it's necessary. I believe that we need each other as men and women, as sisters and brothers. Uh, I believe we need each other to do what needs to be done. Amen. The enemy wants to divide. He wants to separate. He wants to tear down. He wants to disrupt. He wants to um, take our uh, influence and our effectiveness away. He don't want us to be uh, influential in, the, in a positive, godly way. He want us to, he want us to be at odds. He want us to be driven by uh, jealousy and envy and ambition and all of this kind of stuff. So, but we decided, we made up in our minds that we are going to unify for where there's unity, there is strength. The Bible says in Psalms 133 and one, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that ran down. See, 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 that's, that's a powerful, powerful observation. And that's a powerful scripture right there because it gives us a powerful observation. Unity produces the oil. See, God cannot anoint what is not unified. What positions us to be anointed and what positions us to receive the oil is unity. Amen. 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 So even in trying to be solo, even in trying to isolate, even in trying to do it yourself, opposite or absent from others or absent from fellowship, it will also disqualify us from the anointing as well. So anytime God places his anointing upon you, he is anointing you to bring unity somewhere, no matter what your call is, no matter what your ministry is, no matter what your occupation is, no matter what your uh, business is, it is all designed to bring and produce unity. Amen. It is to bring people into unity with God first. And once we bring people into unity with God first, God will, will in turn unify everybody else. Amen. 
We need, watch this, so that means we need the anointing to be unified. It takes the anointing to come together. Good God Almighty, y'all ain't saying nothing. I said it takes the anointing of God to bring us together. And if it takes the anointing of God to bring us together, then it is going to take the anointing of God to keep us together. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you, my big sister, Pastor Jackie McNair. God bless you, Pastor McNair. I pray that all is well with you on this Monday afternoon, and you are doing absolutely great. So we need the anointing to come together. And if it, it is it, and if it is the anointing that brings us together, it is going to take the anointing to keep us together. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is the anointing that causes us to stand in the midst of trying times, in the midst of the storms and the rain, because we are going to encounter, we are going to go through and experience different types of situations. But what causes us to overcome, what causes us to conquer, what causes us to, 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 to win the battle, Hallelujah. It is the anointing of God, even in the midst of going through sickness and, and pain. It, it, it takes an anointing to endure pain. It takes the anointing to endure sickness and, and to be able to hold on to your faith and hold on to your testimony and hold on to your vow. Uh, you know, the saints used to sing a song. I made a vow to the Lord and I won't take it back. No matter what I got to go through, my, my answer is yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes in the midst of it. Yes before I go in it. Yes when I go through it. And yes when I come out. I still got a yes, Lord. And the only way that you can hold on and walk up to you, walk in, 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 in your yes, Lord, that it has to be an anointing. And so the enemy understands the power of fellowship. He don't want us to be in fellowship. Hallelujah to God. And, and watch this. And it's not enough because, you know, we broke that word fellowship down. Well, a lot of people say uh, fellowship means that there is more than one fellow in the ship. And, um, that, 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 that that's a nice observation. You understand, but but I want to I want to take it a little further. Uh, you can you can have more than one fellow in the ship, but that still does not guarantee that every fellow and everybody that's in the ship is in fellowship, because a lot of people can be in the same boat but not be on the same page. <laughs> Y'all ain't saying that. A lot of people can be on the same boat but not have the same mindset. A lot of people can be on the same boat, but have different reasons and have different desires and, and have different ideas. Hallelujah to God. So just because you got a bunch of people in the same room don't mean that everybody is there for the same purpose. Glory be to God. We have to have the same mind. We have to have the same desire. We got to have the same purpose. Glory to God. We got to be there for the same cause. Glory be to God. Or else we are divided. We got a lot of people in the room. We got a lot of people that showed up. But the question is, are we with one accord? Hallelujah to God. The Bible says in the book of Nehemiah, for the people had a mind to work. Everybody that was working alongside of Nehemiah, they had the same mind. That's how they was able to accomplish the task of rebuilding the wall. Glory be to God. In spite of the odds, in spite of the distractions that was coming from Sanballat and Tobias and all of those who was trying to distract Nehemiah and try to get him to come down off the wall, they refused 
to come down. Why? Because they had a mind to work. So everybody was with one accord, with one mind. Why? Because they showed up with the same purpose. They showed up with the same goal. And that's how they was able to get this, the right results because everybody was with one accord to accomplish the same thing. And because they were so unified and because they were so one, God anointed the task. He anointed their hands. He anointed their abilities. He anointed the skills and the talents. So everything that showed up with them, God placed his anointing upon it. He placed his anointing upon it because he placed his anointing upon them. And so when God places anointing upon you and he places his anointing upon me and he places his anointing among us, then everything that is in our possession, everything that is up under our charge, everything that is in our possession, he anoints it to prosper. Why? Because the anointing trickles from the head down. Hallelujah to God. It, 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 it ran from the head down all the way down to the beard. As a matter of fact, why don't you join me, please? Over in Psalms 133, let's let's go ahead. Since since the Holy Spirit has already led us there, let's let's go ahead and and go to Psalms 133 right quick. Hallelujah to God. I know I said that I was going to pray, but Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Bless us now. Speak your word. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do, and we'll give you glory in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Psalms 133 and verse number one. Check it out, ladies and gentlemen. Hallelujah to God. Check it out. Psalms 133, verse number one. Behold, watch this. The word behold means to look upon. It means to take a look. Look how good. Look at, in other words, when it said behold, how good, he says, look, take a look and see how good, hallelujah, and how pleasant it is uh, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Now watch this. He says, unity is pleasant to the eyes. Hallelujah to God. It is not it is it is it is it is not something glory to God that 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 you 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 have to despise. It, it it should be pleasant to your eyes to see unity at work. It ought to be an encouragement. It it ought to be it ought to be it ought to be a lifting. It it, it ought to be a motivation to you to see men and women and to see men and women of God and sisters and brothers and co-workers and neighbors and family members and, and all kinds of people who are able to come together in the spirit of unity. It is pleasant how good. If you want to see something good, if you want to see something pleasant, look at brethren and sisters come together in unity. That's a witness all by itself. That's a testimony all by itself to be able to see, uh, 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 to be able to see an example of unity. But a lot of folk have never seen that. They've never seen that. Unity is very rare in this day and time because we have people who are either trying to operate alone or they're operating out of, of competition and what have you. But unity is a beautiful thing. When you are able to see people come together and work and to accomplish something and to fulfill something, it is pleasant. It is good. And the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brothering to dwell together, to dwell together. There it is again. The point that I was making, the point that I was making in the beginning, just because a lot of people can be present in the same place 
And a lot of people can be present in the same room. And a lot of people can be present at the same event. Doesn't mean that there is fellowship. It doesn't mean that. Uh, the Bible says how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. Watch this. Dwell means to remain. Hallelujah to God. What's going on, Tanya? Good to see you, young lady. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well. I ain't seen you in a while. Good to see you. Happy Monday evening to you. God bless you, you and your family. Glory be to God. Now, now the Bible said to dwell. It means to remain. Uh, 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 it is not enough for us to have one fellowship. We need fellowship to continue. Hallelujah to God. We need fellowship to continue in order for the oil to continue to flow. Glory to God. We can't just come together one time. We can't just uh, fellowship one time. Or, 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 and, and, and we can't, we can't be at odds this time, but we were unified last time. No, we have to learn how to agree to disagree. See, we can still be in fellowship and, 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 and we may, we may not agree on everything, but that should not interrupt the fellowship. Glory to God. We have to learn, we have to mature and get to the place that you can agree to disagree and not fall out, and not divide, and, and not disconnect, but we have to maintain the fellowship if we want the oil to continue to flow. Amen. Amen. In order that the, 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 the testimony and the witness and the example of what good and pleasant looks like, we have to continue in the fellowship. We have to remain. Glory to God, which means if you're going to be in fellowship, you have to be a stable individual. You cannot be an unstable individual and expect to remain in fellowship. And the reason why we don't see a lot of fellowships consistently remaining is because we have a lot of unstable people. And you cannot build, hallelujah, you cannot remain in fellowship with unstable individuals. Hallelujah to God. People that are not consistent, people that are not faithful, people that are not dedicated, people that are not committed, because it takes all of that in order to be in fellowship. It's going to take commitment. It's going to take dedication. It's going to take discipline. It's going to take self-denial. It's, it's, it's going to take, it's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take a uh, 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 unconditional love. It's going to take forgiveness. It's going to take patience. It's going to take all of those things. You're going to have to suffer long if you are going to continue in fellowship. Amen. And, and watch this. The common reason, the common goal, the common foundation, hallelujah to God, that we are after is the oil. If we want the oil to continue to flow, then we will forgive. If we want the oil to continue to grow, to, to, to flow, then we will suffer and be patient with somebody that may be going through or that may be having a transitional period in their process in life. So we are willing to be patient for the sake of the oil. We are willing to love unconditionally for the sake of the oil. Hallelujah to God. So it is a requirement that we fellowship so that we can have the oil of God. Hallelujah to God. And so we need the oil of God. Hallelujah to God. We need it. We need it. Ain't no sense in trying to do anything if you don't have the anointing. Because you will end up operating in flesh and you will begin to perform. Glory be to God. And so it won't be worship. It won't be productivity. 
it will be performance. And so we need the we need the anointing. The anointing is a disciplinary. The anointing is a governor. Glory to God. The anointing is 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 it, the anointing is accountability by itself. Hallelujah to God. See anybody, hallelujah to God, that is not submitted to accountability, they don't have no oil. Because it is the anointing that makes sure that you are held accountable. You want to be held accountable. You want to be held responsible. If you do something right or wrong, you want to be held accountable. You want to take responsibility. Why? Because it is the anointing that causes you to do so. Hallelujah to God. See, people got it all wrong. They want the anointing to shine. You don't need the anointing to shine. All you need is some bright lights. Lord have mercy. You don't need the anointing to shine. All you need is a stage and a platform and the curtains pull wide open. You don't need the anointing for that. Hallelujah to God. All you need is some folk that, that will support you and that will validate you. That don't mean you got the anointing. Just because you have a great following don't mean you have the anointing. No, the anointing is operating opposite of what we think it is. Glory be to God. The anointing is God-given ability. It is the ability that God gives you to do what he has called you to do. Glory be to God. So in other words, if God don't give you his ability, you can't do it. Glory be to God. You can't do it with the effectiveness and with the and with the power that it takes to get it done the right way. Now, you can do a whole lot of stuff, but is it the right way? Because if it ain't God's way, it ain't the right way. So that doesn't mean you can't be successful, but there's the difference in being successful and being prosperous. See, it takes an anointed to prosper. Hallelujah to God. Glory be to God. God anoints you to prosper. He, glory. Hallelujah. He anoints you to prosper. He anoints you to be a, a, effective. He anoints you to finish and to complete. Glory be to God. He, he anoints you to do the things that you are called to do. See, you can have a call, but until you get an anointing, you can't fulfill that call. You can have a gift but if you want that gift to operate in its proper order and to operate in its proper text and the context, you need the anointing to do so. So the anointing is the one that disciplines us. It, it, it causes us to operate in the lines. It keeps us in our lane. See, if you, when you are anointed, it keeps you in your lane. Hallelujah. You won't be veering too far to the left and, and you won't be going too far to the right and, and you won't be following too close and, and you, you won't be, you won't, you won't be operating out of road rage because it is the anointed that keeps you in your lane. Hallelujah to God. It's the anointing that causes you to travel the right speed. So you won't be getting in a hurry. You won't be operating out of ambition and impatience. Why? Because it is the anointing that keeps you in the right speed. It's, it's the anointing that keeps you in your lane. It's the anointing that causes you to, to, to travel safe. Hallelujah to God. It is, it is the anointing that teaches you how to respect others that is traveling in the same direction as you. See, see, it is the anointing that won't let you be disrespectful. It is the anointing that won't let you be insensitive. It is the anointing that will cause you to be concerned about your brother and your sister. It is the anointing that will cause you to think of others before yourself. It is the anointing that won't let you be selfish. It is the anointing that won't let you be prideful. It is the anointing that won't let you be arrogant. It is the anointing that won't let you look down your nose at somebody else that you think is less than you. That, that that, that, that's the anointing of God. Good evening to you, Sister Tamelia Herman McAllister. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well with you and your family and my brother, Brian McAllister, and everybody 
over there at the McAllister camp. Glory be to God. Good evening to you. Glory to God. Y'all got me sweating. I, I feel like preaching. I, 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 I thought we were just going to have a little segment and, uh, and I thought we were just going, we were just going to have a piece of bread and a drink of water. But, 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 but y'all got me over here sweating because hallelujah. When I get to talking about the anointing, you know, that's my subject. Y'all ain't saying that. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have made it this far if it wasn't for the anointing. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't have made it. All the stuff that you and I I have been through, hallelujah, all the ups and the downs and all the ins and the outs and all of the storms and the, and the, and the rains and all of the pain and, 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 and all of the circumstances and all of the transitions and the losses of loved ones and sicknesses and all of these things, surgeries and all of this stuff. We wouldn't have made it had it not been for the anointing. We made it. We came through. Hallelujah to God. Glory, glory, glory. Many millions didn't make it. But we were one of the ones who did. Hallelujah. It had to be God. Hallelujah to God. Because the odds were stacked against us. Hallelujah to God. There were times to where you couldn't even see no way. It were times to where, hallelujah to God, you had made up in your mind, God, if this is it, prepare me to go back with you. Come, Lord Jesus. But God had other plans. And the anointing told you to stay a little longer. Hallelujah to God. If God was going to come and get you, you was ready. You had your bags packed. But the anointing say, not yet. He still got some more work for you to do. He still got something else for you to complete and to fulfill. I'm going to let you stay a little while longer. And the anointing got you through. The anointing, hallelujah, carried you through. Glory to God. The anointing, hallelujah, when you couldn't sleep at night, it was the anointing that rocked you to sleep. Hallelujah. When the enemy want to disturb your sleep and to disturb your rest, it was the anointing that brought rest in your room and, and, and begin to rock you to sleep and, and begin to speak peace over you and, and, and the, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. It began to guard your heart and mind. Hallelujah to God. And so without the anointing, we wouldn't have made it. Without the anointing, we would have failed. Without the anointing, we would have quit and gave up a long time ago. But thanks be to God. And so now when people look at our lives, when people sit back and they step back and they begin to look at you, they say how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Oh, what a blessing it is to be able, hallelujah, to survive a storm and to endure a trial. And, and yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we don't have to fear no evil for that Thou art with us. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is. Glory to God. For God to bring you out of a storm and a situation and you turn around and look back and see how chaotic it was and see how dangerous it was and see how life and death traps and all kinds of things that was around you. Even though you was living, there were death traps set. There was traps and ditches and pits and all kinds of things that the devil had dug and set up to to try to entrap us. But when you look back and see where God has brought you out of, and you know it had to be the anointing that got you through that. Yokes was all over the place. Hallelujah to God. All kind of traps were set. See, you couldn't see it while you was going through it. You couldn't really pay attention and see everything that you was in the midst of while you were in it. But when God brings you out of it and he allow you to see what he brought you through and you're like, oh my God. God, hallelujah. I didn't see that danger over there. I didn't see that trap over there. I didn't see that ditch dug over there. I didn't see that. I thought they was my friend. I thought they was for me and I thought they was with me. And God, you showing me the real intent of the heart of man? Lord, I thank you. 
It was the anointing that caught me through this. It was the anointing that kept me through that. It was the anointing that kept my mind. Hallelujah. Had I seen all of that? Had I witnessed all of that? Had all that been exposed to me, it probably would have tore me down. It would have it would have messed with my mind. It would have messed with my spirit. It would have messed with my heart. But I thank you. I thank you for protecting me. I thank you for covering me. I thank you for shielding me. I thank you for blessing me. And many of you, you got a praise right now. You got a testimony right now. You got a thank you, Jesus, right now. You got a glory to God right now. Why? Because God brought you through it. God brought you out of it. God brought you out in the midst of it. And when you look back, glory to God, the shadow of death, death was all around you, but the anointing, the anointing kept you alive, hallelujah to God, death was so close, hallelujah, death was so close that you could have bumped into it, but, but the anointing, the anointing, even death being that close, the anointing wouldn't let it come nigh you. See, y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah to God. Trouble and trials and death and all of that stuff can be nigh you. Nigh means it can be so close that you take one step. Whoop, there it is. But the anointing is so powerful. The anointing is so great that death and stuff can, sickness and disease can be that close to you and yet not touch you. You can be that close and yet not touch it. Hallelujah to God. It couldn't touch it. Y'all ain't saying that. It wanted to touch it, but it couldn't touch it. It wanted to grab you, but it couldn't touch it. It wanted to grab a hold of you. It wanted to get his claws and, and his arms wrapped around you, but, but, but the anointing wouldn't let it get you. Hallelujah to God. And so we got to praise. We got a praise that won't quit. We got a praise that refused to go on strike because it is the anointing that kept us. It is the anointing that brought us through. It is the anointing that spared our lives. It is the anointing. I know what it was. I know who it was. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. I'm not confused. I know who it was. Ain't nobody going to get the credit for this but God. Ain't nobody going to get the glory for this but God. It was God that brought us through. It was God that anointed us. It was God that rebuked the enemy. It was God that delivered us from the snare of the fowler. It was God that brought us from yesteryear to today. It was God. Nobody but God. God healed our bodies. Nobody but God. Yeah, we heard the diagnosis, but God is a healer. He's a great physician. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. He is a miracle maker. Hallelujah to God. It was God. It was God. Make no mistake about it. We are not ashamed. We are telling on the rooftop. We are telling on the mountain. We are telling on the street corner. We are telling in Walmart. We are telling in food line. We'll tell it at the gas station. We'll tell it in church. We'll tell it everywhere we go. It was nobody but God. I'm not ashamed. Who did it? God did it. <laughs> Who did it? Who did it? God did it. That's who did it. God did it. God did it. <laughs> Woo. Lord, y'all better come get me. Because I feel, I feel, I feel my help coming through here. I believe, I believe, I believe somebody need to come and get me. Because there's a praise. <laughs> see? See? See that why, you know, when you when you know that you know that you know what God has done for you, you don't need no praise team. Mm -mm. You don't need no choir. Mm -mm. You don't need no music. Uh-uh. You don't need you don't need something to stir you up. You already on fire. <laughs> Woo! Hey, 
hey, hey, hey, hey. Yes, sir. Whoo, glory. Mm, my God, I felt that. Hallelujah to God. You, you, you don't need nobody to stir you. You don't need nobody. You don't need nobody to churn you and pump you and prime you. No, 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 no. When you know who it was that did it, when you know who it was that brought you out, when you know who it was that healed your body, I don't need nobody to tell me to give God glory. Hallelujah. What he did for me lets me know I need to give him glory. My testimony tells me I need to give him glory. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. See, see, it is my testimony. It is my testimony. It is what he's already done. It is the stuff that he had let me live through and survive through. That is what lets me know I need to praise him. Hallelujah to God. God bless you, DB3. God bless you, DB3. Hallelujah. Good to see you, little brother. See, it's my testimony that reminds me. And sometimes people make the mistake, hallelujah to God, because hallelujah, they make a mistake when they come to the house of God or, or they wake up in the morning. They make a mistake because they feel like they have already praised the Lord for something that God has done. But I submit to you that you will never praise God enough because there's a whole lot of stuff he did for you that you don't know about. There's some stuff he's doing for you right now that you have no idea. All the germs and all the sicknesses and all the diseases that he's keeping out of you and off of you. And you're breathing in and out in the midst of all kinds of germs. But God has protected you. Bullets are flying. All kinds of danger and sicknesses all around. But God won't let it come now your dwelling. Hallelujah. You always got something to thank him for. You always got something to praise him for. There's no such thing as you ain't got nothing to bless him for. He been good to you before you were born. Hallelujah. The fact that he let me be born is enough reason for me to praise him for the rest of my life. Lord have mercy. That's a reason right there. For me to praise him for the rest of my life. Because I could have died at childbirth. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Something could have happened and took me out of here. But God let me make it. Hallelujah. He let me survive in the womb. Hallelujah. He let me come out. Hey, shut up. I said he let me come out of the womb. Hallelujah. Safe and sound. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. See, all kinds of things could have happened, but didn't happen. It should have happened, but it didn't happen. It would have happened, but it didn't happen. And all of that was because of God, because of his anointing. So we always got a reason. We always got a reason. We got a reason. We got a reason. So we need to hold on to the fellowship so that the oil can remain. Hallelujah to God. God bless you, Pastor Derek Murray and Lady Kimberly Murray, Rescue Temple 2 Church family. God bless you on this Monday afternoon. I pray that all is well and you all are having a God bless Monday. See, for the oil's sake, fellowship is required. For the oil's sake, fellowship is required. And the text says, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothering to dwell together, to dwell, to remain, to live together in unity. It is like the ointment. 
It is like the oil, the precious oil. See, 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 it, it is it is good and it is pleasant to see unity among brothers and sisters. And it is so good and so pleasant that God said it is like the ointment that fell, that went from the head <laughs> down to the beard and it ran all the way down to the skirts of the garment, which means that unity causes everybody to receive and to experience the anointing of God. See, what we've done, we've isolated, we have, we have, we have made, we have made people to feel as if only certain people can be anointed. No, it is God's will that we all, we all be under the, the, the power and the, and the anointing of God. See, we all, we all need an anointing. We all need the anointing. Every last one of us. I don't care what your call is. I don't care what your gift is. I don't care what your talent is. We all need the anointing of God in order to do it. So um, now well, what it is, is we see certain people anointed because everybody don't want to do what is required. See, you can't just get the anointing and, and not do what God requires for you to have the anointing. So that that that's where the difference comes in. So when you see God using certain people and, and, and you see and you see God anointing certain people and you see God's hand on certain people, whereas it's not on others, it is because those that his hand and, and his anointing and his blessings is on and upon, it is because they are doing what is required. Hallelujah. See, you 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 can't you 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 have nothing to say about somebody who is anointed by God when you are not willing to do that which is required like they are. See, see, see the reason, see, see what that does, and, and, and here it is. Show me where jealousy is. I will show you where unity is not. Show me where envy is. I will show you where unity is not. Show me where competition is. And I will show you where unity is not. Show me where there's a lot of flesh going on and working and operating and performing. And I'll show you where there's no oil. <laughs> so, so before you before you criticize someone that God is using and anointing and, and blessing, before you criticize, you have to ask yourself this question. Am I doing what is required of me to receive the anointing and the blessing and and, and the opportunity that God that seeks to use me in. What am I doing that is causing me not to experience the anointing? What am I doing or not doing that is causing me not to experience the blessing? Because the Bible says that the ointment is supposed to run from the head down. And so everybody that is connected to the body is supposed to be affected and blessed by the anointing. I can't get no help in here. Hallelujah. See, see, see. And see, and anybody that anybody that is walking around flaunting, talking about I'm anointed, they ain't anointed. Because see, the anointing does not try to, to bring attention to you. The anointing causes people to focus on him. 
So if people are flocking to you and if people are praising and celebrating you, you are not operating in the anointing. <laughs> Uh -uh. No, 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 no. Because the anointing is not about you. And there's no such thing, my anointing. You don't have no anointing. Y'all ain't said that. It's God's anointing. And he wants to anoint the whole body. But he can't anoint everybody. Watch this. God wants to anoint the whole body. But unfortunately, everybody is not experiencing the anointing because everybody don't want to be unified. See, when you don't want to be unified, you are limiting and you are disqualifying yourself. You are not hindering. You are not stopping the rest of the body that is unifying and that is uh, uh, that is coming together and that is uh, doing that which is required. God is going to continue to bless those that are unified and that are obedient and that are working with one accord. So God is going to bless them, but we disqualify ourselves when we don't want to do that which is required, you see. And that's how nobody has to feel left out. Just unify. Nobody has to be overlooked. Just unify. See, y'all have said that. <laughs> see, if we see, see, we can get rid of clicks. We can get rid of uh, uh, isms and schisms. We can get rid of all of this stuff that we see today if we just unify. If we just come together the way the Bible says to do and the way the Lord instructs us to do, we eliminate all of that. We eliminate the good old boys club. We eliminate the social circle. We we eliminate. We we will eliminate uh, of the secret societies and and the secret clubs and all of that. We'll get rid of all of that. We'll get rid of all of the sedity circle, you know, you know, where all the sedity folks hang with. Y'all just said that. Yeah, they, they, they don't hang with everybody else because they common. You know, it's the sedity, it's the sedity people, you know. It's it's the people that, that has positions and power and influence and and, and is, is 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 a part of the who's who club, you know, see them type of folk. All 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 of those, all of those little groups will be dissolved if we just unify. If 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 we stop looking at each other as if we're better, if if everybody see each other the way God see you, we would get rid of that. See, we need to pray and ask God to 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 we 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 need to we need to pray and ask God to adjust our sight. You 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 know like the microscopes, you know you know like the telescopes. And, and you know, sometimes you got to adjust the focus. You got to turn that knob in order to zoom in. You know, just like your phone when you about to take a picture. You know, you got to, you know, you got to take your two fingers and you got to, you got to adjust the screen and you got to zoom in. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You you got to zoom in. You got to, you got to readjust it so so you can get a clearer view. That's what we need God to do with our sight, with our heart with our minds. We need God to readjust our view. We need, we need God to zoom us in so that we can see people the way he sees them. A lot of times we see people the way and according to what somebody said about them or the experience we had with them. Or um a lot of time we 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 prejudge by the way they look on the outside. And then sometimes people see you comparing you to themselves. And so a lot of times people will prejudge you and 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 use themselves as the standard of trying to define you. <laughs> <laughs> don't even know you from a can of paint, but they already prejudge you. They already draw a conclusion about you without even knowing anything about you. And so it is the oil 
that we need to have in order to unify. There will be no fellowship without the oil, without the anointing. And just because we have a lot of fellows in the ship does not equal fellowship. Because again, you can have a lot of people gathered. You can have a lot of people in the room. You can have a lot of people in the boat, but that doesn't mean that they are together. And that doesn't mean that they are there for the same purpose. They're there for the same goal. They're there for the same reason. And that doesn't mean that they are with one accord. So um, don't think, don't think that just because there are a lot of fellows in the ship that you are among and in the midst of fellowship. Because it takes the anointing to bring us into fellowship. Because remember, those of you that have come on at the end, um, you, you, you may have to go back and watch the beginning of the video. Uh, we covered a whole lot in the beginning of the video. So uh, we're actually at the end right now. <laughs> So um, you may have to go back and watch the replay, but the anointing plays a great part in fellowship. And I talked about what the anointing is and what the anointing is not. And a lot of people think the anointing is one thing, but it is not. And um, so we need, we need the power of God, ladies and gentlemen. We need the power of God. We need the anointing of God because fellowship is needed. Fellowship is necessary. Um, there is, and we have to be consistent. We have to be dedicated. We got to be committed. We got to be loyal. That's another thing that's missing. And this is why we cannot really maintain and dwell um, because loyalty is lacking. Now, let me let me let me help you with that word loyalty. Loyalty doesn't mean you agree with me when I'm wrong in order to show me that you are with me or you got my back. Um, and we cannot bring the meaning of loyalty that is that means one thing in the world we can't bring that mindset and we can't bring that mentality and we cannot adopt the world's definition of loyalty versus the kingdom of god's definition of loyalty now me being loyal and you being loyal means if i'm wrong don't agree with me. Your loyalty will cause you to tell me the truth and to and to and to love me and show me my wrong. Hallelujah. And correct me in the spirit of love and reconciliation. Now, and loyalty uh says, I see you going in the wrong direction, and I'm not gonna stand here and not say nothing and keep my mouth shut and let you go down that path and, and shipwreck. No, loyalty says, I love you too much to see you go down the wrong path. And, 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 and I, 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 I at least need to warn you. Now, if you choose to continue to, to travel down the wrong way, now that's on you, but I'm not going to follow you. And I and I'm not and I'm not going to go with you. Hallelujah to God. Somebody need to stay on safe grounds. So just in case you begin to drown, at least I'm on dry land to where I can throw you a life preserver. Cause there ain't no sense in both of us sinking. That ain't loyalty. That's foolishness. 
I can't get no help in here. See, a lot of stuff we call in loyalty is just plain silly. All right. <laughs> uh oh, wait a minute. My numbers are dropping. <laughs> yes, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, sister. That's right, sister Jester Bowie. That's right. Hey, please tell me. Now, see, ain't no look. It don't make no sense for both of us to drown. Now, 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 now. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and say this. If you can't swim, what you doing playing in water? I'm 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 gonna go ahead and. I'm going to go ahead and rewind that one. That that needs to be repeated. Y'all ain't saying that. If you know you can't swim, what you doing playing in the lake? Why are you hanging out at the ocean? Why are you, why are you, why are you playing in the water and you know you can't swim? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. And sometimes we try to, sometimes we try to, we try to, we try to test folks. Sometimes we, we play games with people trying to test and to prove somebody's loyalty. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a see if they got my back. I'm a, I'm a see if they really my friend. I'm a, I'm a see if they going to come through for me. So you're going to go out and intentionally, intentionally and deliberately get in trouble. You're going to go out and intentionally do something bad and you know it's wrong to try to test somebody's loyalty. So you're going to go out and commit a crime so that you can test somebody's loyalty to see that if you get caught, they'll come and bail you out. That's not loyalty, ladies and gentlemen. That's just plain silly. And I think we need to give the world back their definition. See? Loyalty. You know, all of that crazy stuff. You out there playing on the devil's territory. And you, and you up there, you up there tempting, you up there tempting the Lord thy God by 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 daring somebody to shoot you. And and, and you talking about, you talking about now, you say you got my back. You say you loyal. You say you say we tight. You say we ride or die. And you out there causing trouble, talking junk, creating conflict, getting all in people's face, all in people's business, stirring up trouble, stirring up fires. And then you want somebody to help you swing. You want somebody to help you and stand with you. And, and you got you got all kind of folk looking for you and ready, ready to check you and check you out. And you want to test somebody loyal to about you got my back. What? <laughs> are, are you, are you a kidding me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's right. If I have to test you, then I should already know you're not. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Jester. Thank you. Are you are you kidding me? So that ain't loyalty, ladies and gentlemen. To you, what do you what do you that ain't no loyalty? Loyalty says, my brother, my sister, you're not as, you're not as spiritual as you used to be. You, you're not praying like you used to. You used to be on fire. What happened? See, that's, that's what it means to be loyal over here in the kingdom. <laughs> See, that's that what it means to be loyal. Uh, you ain't praying like you used to. 
You, you, you're not coming to church like you used to. Y'all ain't saying that. You, 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 you slacking on your job. You see, see, loyalty says you see a coworker over there slacking and, 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 and you know, and you know that there've been some talk among the supervisors that, that they are talking about letting them go and, and, and they might lose their job if they don't pull up. If they don't, they don't shape up, they're going to ship them out. And loyalty says, I got to pull that man to the side. I got to pull that young lady to the side. And I got to let them know that their, their work performance is a little low. And, and, and there is some chatter about them being terminated if there is no change in their performance. And so loyalty says, I need to say something. I need to put them in the know. You don't want nobody to lose a job. As a matter of fact, if that was you, if, if you was in that predicament, you want somebody to tell you. You want somebody to let you know. If you was in, see, hey, thank you, Lord. There it is. There it is. There it is. See, what you are refusing to do, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Whatsoever you are refusing to do, you're going to reap that. You're going to read that. The Bible said, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. We initiate what's done to us. What we do, uh, what we do to others, we are setting the standard so that others can do to us. Do unto others as you will have them to do unto you. As you will have them to do unto you. You set the standard by what you do. You can't expect somebody to do unto you what you have not done for somebody else. And remember, what you do unto others, it may not always come back to you through the people that you did for and you did good to. It is going to come back, but it may not necessarily come back through the ones you did it for. Oh, oh, Woo. did y'all hear me? Woo. Yeah, that's sad, Lamar. That's very sad. Did y'all hear what I said? Don't always expect what you do to come back through who you did it to because God has many ways and many people to bless you back through. So let us See, that's, we don't understand. That's loyalty. That's fellowship. That's fellowship. If you, if you see somebody, you see somebody trunk is open and they about to drive off with the trunk open and you walking right by them and you standing right there. Why don't you let them know that the trunk is open? It, they got groceries back there. They 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 got they got shopping bags back there. Let them know that the trunk open, and that could be the start of a fellowship. You don't know who you are helping. You you don't know who you are assisting that God can use to bless you in life later on. Sometimes we neglect our answer. We neglect a blessing because the blessing that we neglect a lot of times shows up in the form of needing help first. Sometimes the blessing that is designed and that is, that is, that is, that is purpose for you to, sometimes the blessing that is designed and purpose to bless you later. We miss out 
because the blessing shows up first in the form of needing your help. Sometimes the blessing can be in need of your help first. And a lot of times we are not willing to help and we're not concerned enough to help. We miss the very thing that was designed to bless you later because we didn't show up for it when it needed our help. <laughs> y'all don't like this, do you? <laughs> y'all don't y'all don't really like this, do you? <laughs> See? See, we 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 don't like this. We don't like this. <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna tell you something, and you may not, you may not, you may not like it, and you may not agree. But a lot of us ain't being blessed because we only bless those that we know, and we only bless those that are blessing to us. And we think a lot of our blessings is gonna always come through people that we know. <laughs> It all depends on who it is that determines who gets your help. Well, you, you ain't going to be blessed like that. Sometimes the, sometime the greatest soil to sow in to is strangers. Sometimes the, sometimes the greatest soil that produces the greatest harvest for you is stranger soil. Sowing into strangers. And the Bible already tells you to be careful how you entertain strangers because you you because some have entertained angels unaware. <laughs> Sometimes the angel that came to bring you your answer and your blessing. They show up in the form of a stranger. Woo! And how many times have we walked by strangers who could have been angels who had your blessing? See, we don't like this. <laughs> I told you, you may not like them. <laughs> Do I hear a dollar for a sound? Dollar, dollar, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, three dollars, three dollars, three dollars, three dollars, four dollars, four dollars, four dollars, four dollars, five dollars, five dollars, five dollars, six dollars, six dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars, eight dollars, eight dollars, eight dollars, eight dollars, nine dollar, nine dollar, nine dollar, dollar, ten dollar, then ten, ten dollar, then ten, ten, ten dollar, ten dollar, ten dollar, ten dollar, eleven dollar, eleven dollar, eleven dollar, twelve dollar, twelve dollar, twelve, 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 do, 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 uh, uh, I buy, I buy twelve dollars going once, twelve dollar going twice, twelve dollar, twelve dollar. So to the man in the red and white shirt on the live, you have just bought everybody sound for twelve dollars. <laughs> Can y'all believe it, guys? That's the deal of the season. I just bought multiple people's sound for twelve dollars. <laughs> what a deal! GA, go to your room.
<laughs> oh my goodness. Y'all go ahead and laugh. Laughter is a medicine. Laughter is a medicine. It's good for you. Get you a good laugh here. Y'all know we're going to do it. We do it all on this laugh. We laugh. We praise the Lord. We have a good time. We enjoy one another. It's called fellowship. It's called fellowship. Go ahead and laugh. Get you a good laugh here. And um, as we bring this dynamic, enthusiastical, powerful, magnificent segment to a close. <laughs> uh, and if anybody want to buy some sound, I got plenty in stock. Just message me on Facebook or text me, let me know, and put your order in, and I'll ship it out. <laughs> let me leave y'all alone. Y'all y'all ain't right. Y'all pray for the boy. I need prayer. That's all it is. I'm just having a good old time. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But... I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us is what I'm trying to do. I really am. I'm trying to help us to see the importance of fellowship. I'm trying to show us what loyalty looks like. I'm trying to show us how to be blessed. And I'm trying to show us how to build fellowship. And there is again, I mean, you know, a lot of times we fellowship with people, but what are we getting out of it? What are we really getting out of it? You know what I mean? Who are you in fellowship with? Is it making you better? Um, have you grown? Um, have you become a better person? Are they, are they adding anything to you? Are you always giving to them and they never really giving anything to you? I mean, how is it? Are you, are you, are you, are you, are you growing? Are you, are you, are you getting better? Um, are you learning anything? I mean, what is, what is the purpose of the fellowship? I mean, what, what we call fellowship, what is it? I mean, what, what is it? Uh, is it, are you seeing any fruit? Uh, is, is anything growing or, I mean, it, or is it just, you do for me, I do for you. You support me, I support you. Is that really fellowship or, 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 or are you just doing that because they did something for you and you feel obligated to do back for them? But the question is, if they don't do for you, would you do for them? See that, that's where, that's where the true loyalty test is. If I, if I don't support you, will you continue to support me? If you don't support me, will I continue to support you? So what what is this what is this really based upon? What is the foundation of what is the foundation of your fruit? What is the reason for your actions? What's really what is this really about? You see what I'm saying? So these are the questions that we got to ask and you got a right to do so. <laughs> you need to ask these type of questions. Okay. Uh, I right, then, uh, what, what, what's going on here? Uh, um, what, what the problem is? Uh, <laughs> I mean, you got to ask these questions because you will find out who is really loyal and really true in your life? All right. Somebody has a question. As it relates to fellowship, should both parties be equally exchanging and imparting, or does it matter if one person is only giving in one area and the other person is giving 
several areas. Should that authenticity of that fellowship be tested by who gives what? Now, see, well, that's a good question, and I'm going to answer it like this. Um, when you start focusing in on who's doing the most, then that is that leads to comparison. And when you begin to compare, then that's going to cause division because you're going to feel as if you're doing more than the other person. So it's going to make you feel like you're being taken advantage of, which that's not going to lead to anything positive. I believe we sometimes we we have to govern what we do. Um, now, that's why it's important that you know the purpose for why you in a person's life. Um, and once God shows you the purpose of why you in a person's life, you stay faithful to that. <laughs> uh, let, let's say, for example, if God places you in a person's life to, I don't know, say, help them with, say, organization. Well, you are only there to help them with organization. Anything else, then that's on you. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes uh, we can take on too much more than what we are required to do. Now, I'm not saying this is your case. I'm just making an example. And um, and I'm just making this example because a lot of times people do this. I'm not saying it's you. But and then sometimes we, we volunteer to do more than what we are required or assigned to do. Okay? And, and, and so, and then once you do that, then you begin to, where the scale is not going to balance out. And a lot of times people end up getting, you know, hurt because when, 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 when maybe something is said, well, a lot of times the response of the other person is, well, I didn't ask you to do that. <laughs> They'll be like, you know, well, you, you did that on your own. I really didn't ask you to do that. So what I'm trying to figure out is what, why, what do, what do I owe you? Or why you, why are you bringing this up? Or what are you, what are you trying to do? Throw this up in my face? Or you, what are you trying to do? See, people, people would take that, you know, and you can mean well, of course. But everybody is not going to reciprocate always on the level in which you give. That's why you have to make sure whatever you are given, <clears throat> that is what is required of you. Um, because everybody is not going to always reciprocate on the level in which you give. All right. Um, and, the, and, the truth of the, and the truth of the matter is, uh, you know, um, 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 <clears throat> you know, I think a lot of times, see that, and then too, we have to, we need that discipline within us. Um, especially when, and I want to say this because a lot of you are givers. You need a governor. You need you need a governor over your life when you're a giver. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, okay? Uh, when you are a giver, you need discipline in your life when you are a giver. <laughs> Now don't don't stop being a giver, but you need discipline um, so that you can know what, 
how, when, where, and to who. <laughs> I'm gonna say that again. This this is this is this is powerful. This is powerful. And uh I, I feel led to share this because this is a powerful principle. Powerful principle. You need discipline as a giver because that discipline will teach you and show you and govern you. When, where, how, what, how much, and to whom. I'm going to say it again. What, when, where, how to do it, how much to do it, and to whom to do it. Um, where is important. When, that's very important because timing is everything. Um, to whom, woo-wee, that's 100% important. <laughs> and how much. So uh, keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. Keep that in mind. That's very important. So, um, this is just some, some, um, simple principles. Um, boy, they jumping off of here like flies. Good God. Oh my. <laughs> I don't understand it. You try to help people and they, I don't know. I don't understand. Boy, I tell you. Whew. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're always getting offended, you can never get no help. And I ain't say nothing mean or rude or anything like that. Uh, I'm talking pretty much normal voice. Uh, I don't know whether the, I don't know whether the lines are crossed coming from, but I don't know. I'm going to keep on doing what the Lord called me to do. That's all I can do. That's that's the best I can do. But uh, it works. That's all I can tell you. I, I live by it. I live anything that I'm sharing with y'all. I live by. Um, I'm not telling you anything that I don't do myself. Uh, I, I believe that if you're going to teach something, if you're going to preach something. <clears throat> like the Bible said, we must first be the first partakers of the fruit. Um, because you cannot, you cannot expect, uh, you cannot expect to be effective without being the first partaker. So again, Whatever you hear on Back to the Bible, Midday Monday, or if you tune into any of our uh, services, whether it relates to Sundays or Wednesdays, if you hear any teaching or messages uh, that are that come through these different uh, networks and media uh, tools that we use to get the word out, YouTube whatever, television broadcasts, believe, believe me you and believe you me. <laughs> Anything I preach and teach, I've experienced, I've lived it, or I'm living it. Um, I'm not going to teach or preach something that I don't know about. I don't live. Um, I, I, I follow these principles as it relates to ministry. I follow these principles as it relates to business. I follow these principles as it relates to social, how I deal with other people, uh, the fellowships, the 
uh, friendships, uh, partnerships as it relates to business, how I deal with my own family members, um, my neighbors, uh, how I deal with people in general. Um, these principles, these principles work. Good evening to you, Jaquita. Jaquita, you're going to have to go back and check out the replay uh, when the live is over. Go back and check out the replay and uh, let it bless your life. Good to see you. God bless you and your family, and I pray that all is well with you. And so I try to, I try to share things that, um, especially on these segments, I mean, because, you know, a lot of stuff, you know, people may not know. Um, and, uh, so truth, truth is your friend. <laughs> you change your perspective about truth. Look at truth as a true friend. That stick of closer than any brother. Truth is a friend that loveth at all times. <laughs> it'll, it'll be there through the thick and the thin, through the ups and downs. All right. So learn how to embrace truth. It is, it is one of the bestest friends you will ever have in life. All right. Come on. Let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight. We praise you, God, for this, this moment, this time of sharing and fellowshipping and impartation and just how you just blessed us tonight. We give you glory tonight. Father, I pray for so many. I pray for men and women. I pray, God, for um, just how you just revealed and shared the, 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 the principles and, and you, you unlocked so many mysteries you unveiled and you shared revelation with us that we can gain an understanding. And we know that manifestation is the response to application. So God, we don't want to just be hearers, but we want to be doers of the word, that we may apply it, that it may produce manifestation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God, for how you touched tonight, how you saved and healed and delivered and set free. God, we pray, God, that you would touch those that may not know you as Lord and Savior. We stand in the gap tonight. Lord, allow your salvation and allow your deliverance to rescue a soul tonight. Rescue souls everywhere. Somebody's looking and watching even right now. And they may be going through a moment of decision and don't know which way to turn. But God, you allow them to tune in right on time. You drew them. No man can come to the Father except the Spirit draw them. And we thank you, God, for your drawing power tonight. Touch him, touch her, touch them in the name of Jesus. Somebody may be lying in the hospital room and you're able to heal tonight. By your stripes, they are healed. You was wounded for our transgressions and you were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. and With your stripes, we are healed. We claim it now. We count it done according to your word and according to your, your will and according to our faith. Let it be done unto them. Heal now. This, destroy the works of the enemy. And we bind the spirit of infirmity and afflictions that are attacking their bodies tonight. And we release peace. We release joy. We release power. We release a recovery. We release, God, your healing virtue tonight. And we thank you, Lord. Strengthen that young man that may be watching from a jail cell. That young lady that may be watching from a jail cell. Wherever they are, God. Somebody might be in a hotel room. 
wherever they are, sitting in their car, contemplating suicide. But Lord, we speak life over them. We command them to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. We counsel every assignment of the enemy that will come to try to rob them and to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus, you have come that they may have life that more abundantly. And we speak it right now. We counsel it now. I say to you, my brother, I say to you, my sister, live. Put the gun down. Put the needle down. Live in the name of Jesus. Don't you do it. It's not over. God has something better in store for you. Live tonight. Change your mind tonight in the name of Jesus. Let there be a heart change. Let there be a mind change. We count it done tonight in the name of Jesus. Strengthen that leader, Lord, that pastor that feel like quitting and throwing in the towel, walking away from that ministry. Turn his heart, God. Strengthen and renew. Restore tonight in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, lift him up. Lift her up where they belong. Have your way, God. Strengthen tonight in the name of Jesus. Anoint them with a fresh touch. Anoint them with a fresh anointing, with fresh oil. Send help, God, from on high. We thank you and we praise you now. I pray for families. I pray for businesses. I pray, God, for those that may feel alone, that they don't know what to do and they feel Oh God, that they are headed in a direction that has no purpose, that has no fulfillment. God, bring your purpose back to them tonight. Allow them to return back to their first love that they may fulfill what you have called them to do. We thank you, Lord. Strengthen now. Touch, Lord. Consecrate us now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope, and I will be lost and dying. We count it done. Lord, I've done what you told me to do, and I said what you told me to say. Get the glory out of it all, Lord, and restore the virtue back in me, I pray. We count it done right now. It is so in Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you, all of you, my brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. What a time, what a time, what a time. What a time we had on tonight. And I pray blessings upon each and every one of you. I want to thank you for all of your comments. I want to thank you for your questions. I want to thank you for those who shared uh, a lot of the, uh, many of you may be going through things. You may be experiencing things. And so you are seeking clarity and you just want to do the right thing. Amen. So I want to say thank you for putting it out there. And I want to thank God for each and every one who share the videos, who invite people in to watch it on your page. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Amen. Um, together, we can get the word out. We can reach more people. There are people that I cannot reach that I do not know. Many of you, you have reach. You have connections. You got access to other souls, other lives that God has blessed you <clears throat> to have the level of influence you have. And so to be willing and to be <clears throat> to be uh, uh, able to share the word and the, and the videos that does not go unnoticed, guys. And I want you to know from AGA to you, I appreciate you for sharing the videos on your pages. And many of you, you are doing a great work. <clears throat> Amen. Be like Nehemiah. You are up on the wall and you refuse to come down. Listen, we still got a praise that won't quit. We got a praise that refuse to go on strike. I will bless the Lord at all times. 
and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What kind of praise is that? That is a praise that refused to quit and it is a praise that refused to go on strike. That's why it, it is always in ready mode in a position to bless the Lord at all times. Praise the name of our God. We love to praise the Lord. The songs, the old songs, the saints used to sing, I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. Hallelujah. He's my rock, my sword, and my shield. He is the wheel in the middle of a wheel. He will never let you down. He'll never let you fall. He is the jewel that I have found. And they will say, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love to praise his name. Praise the name of the Lord. Continue to love to praise him. Continue to love to lift him up. If you lift him up, hallelujah. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I draw all men unto me. Amen. So we thank the Lord for each and every one. I pray that you all uh, will continue to pray ye one for another. Um, I would like to invite you uh, to tune in to our uh, Facebook page. If you want to check out some videos there, we got videos from Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings and all of that good stuff. And uh, <clears throat> I want you to also support our brothers and sisters. You got Pastor D on Thursday night. You got DB3 on Sunday nights. You got, oh, so many others. Many of you, you're doing great things for the kingdom. So please support these brothers and sisters as they do ministry. Um, God has called them into part of the vineyard and uh, they're doing what God has called them to do. It is always a blessing to know that people are praying for you, that people are supporting you. See, this is fellowship, guys. This is what loyalty looks like. The Bible declares in Psalms 133, was our scripture tonight, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. When people see us unified, it is a good thing. It is a pleasant thing to look at. It is a pleasant and a good thing to witness and to be a part of. When people see unity, man, they want to be a part of that because that is a powerful thing to be. We could do so much more together <clears throat> than we can apart. All right. I want to see you make it. I want to see you uh, succeed and prosper. And I know that if we want the same thing, how can we not prosper? How can we not succeed? How can we not fulfill God's purpose when everybody is praying for one another, when everybody is supporting and standing together for the same purpose, and that is to glorify and to magnify his great name and to fulfill the purpose and plans that God has in store and has called us to do. How can we not make it? We can't do nothing but make it. We can't do nothing but do what God has called us to do. So I'm grateful and I'm, bl I'm blessed to be able to uh, uh, stand with you all and to be in fellowship with you all and to be in covenant with you all. Amen. I will continue to pray for all of you. And I know that you all are most certainly uh, praying for me as well want to thank God for you. God bless you, Pastor Murray. God bless you. Uh, all of you that are, uh, uh, that have been blessed by the word tonight. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done. Again, you can check us out at Deliverance Temple. Thank you, Brother Lamar, for posting that. You can check us out at Deliverance Temple Worship Center Greensboro page over there on the Facebook or the book face. <laughs> you can check us out. Uh, you can either make a left or a right and uh, you'll find us uh, over there on book face at uh, the Livers Temple Worship Center, Greensboro. 
Amen. But again, it's been a joy to share this segment with you. Where has the fellowship gone? And we're coming back next week, Lord willing. We're going to continue this. We're going to go at it again and see what else the Lord has to say concerning this great segment. All right. As we often say, be sober, be vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, is walking about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. We choose to dwell in the secret place of the Most High so we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hey, listen, guys, I want you to know that I love you and I'm praying for you. And until we meet again, you continue to keep the fellowship going. You continue to seek to allow the anointing of God to flow from the head down to the beard, even down to the skirts of the garment. Because God wants to pour out his spirit. He wants to anoint us all afresh that we may do that which is pleasing in his sight. You all continue to have a God blessed night, but continue to have a God blessed, uh, safe, successful, and productive week. Hey, listen, we are celebrating Resurrection Sunday this coming Sunday. We know that Friday is Good Friday. So we are expecting a high time in the Lord at all of your places of worship, wherever we celebrate and we worship Jesus Christ. This is a great weekend for us. We are looking forward to that powerful weekend of fellowship and, and praising God and glorifying God because it is Resurrection Sunday Yes, he went to the cross. Yes, he died. Yes, he laid in Joseph Bar tomb for three days and three nights. But early, he got up with all power. On the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. Amen. And he's sitting now on the right hand of God, making intercession for us. And we're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. So we're excited about Resurrection Sunday, and we are looking and expecting a hot time in the Lord. And I pray that God will pour out his blessings and his spirit upon all of you at your places of worship, your houses of praise, and that he would just anoint your pastors and leaders to just preach the gospel. Amen. Preach the paint off the wall and preach the shingles off the roof. Amen. Glory to God. Now make sure you put them back. Amen. Go and get your bucket of paint and a paint roller and a brush just in case they preach the paint off the wall. Somebody can uh, come back by on Monday afternoon and put the paint back. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have any volunteers? To repaint the wall. Amen. Praise the Lord. So uh, let us uh, have a good time. And I know many of you, you're going to be spending time with family as well, having Sunday dinner and Easter dinner. So I pray that that be a great success as well. But have yourself a good time and let's see what the Lord will do on next Monday night. You didn't get a chance to check out the Midday Monday Nugget. Please do so. It will bless your life. Don't fight from strength, fight from strategy. And you will learn the difference between strategy and strength. We gave you an example of David and Goliath, but let it bless your life. It will bless your life. Please go and check it out, all right? This is AGA reporting live for the Heavenly News, a ministry called Back to the Bible, better known of a ministry of Deliverance Temple Worship Center Greensboro, DTWC, you know how we do it. That's DTWC style. But it's been a joy to share the word with you. I'm about to get off of here. It's time to relax, it's time to chill, time to lay it down. We're looking forward to another uh, day tomorrow. I pray blessings upon you all tomorrow and the rest of the week. You all be blessed. And again, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in. All right, this is AGA. I'm out of here. Peace.